What are the best settings for the Panasonic G85? Good morning, good evening and good afternoon guys and welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. Today we are talking about the Panasonic G85 and the best settings. Look, I made a review, that review, not too too long ago about the Panasonic G85 telling my first impressions after getting the camera and now a few months down the line I received a lot of questions and I thought I would make that follow-up video to share with you my best settings for that camera. And it's going to be pretty simple. The first thing I'm going to attack is the autofocus. The second thing is going to be about uh, the camera mode in which I shoot the vlogs. And the third one is going to be about miscellaneous settings like uh, microphone stabilization and stuff like that that can be very important. So before we get started, let's ask the question of the day is what camera do you shoot your videos for YouTube with? Leave your answer in the comments below and let's discuss around it. I'm super interested in, in knowing what camera you're currently using and what camera you would love to use in the future. Okay, now with that being said guys, let's dig into the subject of that mini beautiful camera, the Panasonic G85 that I love. The first thing is autofocus. A lot of you have been asking, but I heard the autofocus is bad, how is it, really, etc. From my experience, to be honest, for video, it's been great so far. I don't lose too much track of the subject, it doesn't hunt for focus. Let me just share with you my settings and it's going to be pretty simple. So, 95% of the time I am in AFC mode. What does that mean? It means that it's continuously refocusing or finding the focus. Now in video mode, it's not going to be hunting back and forth every 5 seconds. It's simply going to do micro micro adjustment that you can't even see just to make sure it's still in focus. In the IFC parameter, I set the camera in face detection mode. What that means is simply that it's going to recognize your face and you can see it. It basically makes a square around your face. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see right here. The moment you press record, it's going to start focusing continuously on your face. Now a little trick is that if you tap your face uh, while you have the square around it, it's actually locking it. So if you're in a crowd uh, with many many people, it's gonna try to stick on your face. Now this is the settings that I've been using most of the time, like when I'm walking, when I'm running, when I'm standing still and talking to the camera, and it's been absolutely amazing for me. So I don't have too, ma too many complaints. The only thing is that if you're in an environment with a lot of people around you, the camera, well, it's difficult for the camera to know who to focus on, so it might go back and forth on different people. Just make sure you tap the screen on your face and that it's locked on you. Otherwise, just put the center point on you and keep the camera in, straight in the middle of you. That's another trick. Uh, now, what else did I write down for you guys? Oh, 1080 versus 4K. The focus in 1080p is actually better, in my opinion, the autofocus than in 4K. Don't ask me exactly why, I think it's just the way the camera processes information. For me, it, it loses focus a lot less in 1080 and than in 4K. Now, that being said, uh, it's a very subtle difference. In 4K, you can mainly see it in difficult environment or in low light where it's gonna uh, suddenly hunt for focus. But in 1080, to be honest, I've never had any problems. I feel really happy with it. And if you're complaining that the focus is too slow, remember this is being used as a video camera and you don't want it to be focusing back and forth super fast. You want it to have something smooth. And this is exactly what the camera does, which is something I love about it. Now one more trick, apparently you can also save your face and the camera will detect you and you can put a priority on your face whenever you're in an environment with other people. I still haven't done so because I didn't feel the need but this is definitely something I might try in the future. Now second point, what camera mode to use for filming and basically there's this little M with the camera right here and this is the manual video mode that I highly recommend to use. Now you can still record with the other modes but I just think it's easier to use that one because you can set everything manually with that video mode. And once you're in the manual camera mode, well, you're gonna be able to set your exposure mode. You can set it basically in P, in A, S or M. And basically, what do I use? Well, S is basically you can set uh, the shutter speed and the rest is going to be set automatically. Now, A is going to be you can set the focus, uh, you're going to be able to set the aperture and it's going to set the rest like the shutter speed and ISO automatically. And if you go into M, you're going to have to set everything absolutely manually. You can't even leave the ISO in auto. Now, why is it so important? Simply because uh, if you're lazy, a bit like me when you're vlogging and taking like videos every day, 
well, you want to shoot in A, an aperture priority, and simply play around with your aperture. Bring a lot of light and you want to reduce your aperture or and have a blurry background or you want to increase it to have everything in focus. It really depends on your situation, but I play a lot with the aperture when I'm shooting, so it's really up to you, but you don't have to think about the rest. And I know there are some like best practice for your shutter speed when you're recording at a certain frame per second and stuff. But when I'm doing daily vlogs, I don't really care to be honest. No offense to the real filmmakers right there, but that's just a reality. Now, whenever I'm doing stuff like that, when I'm talking, if you can see I'm shooting with an icon and everything is manual out there, I don't even see the screen, I don't know what I'm recording. What is important is that in manual mode, you can set everything yourself, which is super important because if you're shooting something for a long time, you want to have the same consistent settings for the same scene, the same light and everything. And when you're doing that also guys, make sure that your light is charged because I have one of my light that is dying right now. That's why you keep seeing a bigger and bigger shadow on my right side. Anyway, let's hurry up and continue to the third part which are the miscellaneous points before we have no more light. Miscellaneous settings guys that I want to share with you are simply your video settings in terms of resolution, what you want to shoot. Shoot 4K 30 frames per second if it's something cinematic, beautiful and that you're going to be reusing in the future or like that has a beautiful landscape, something like that. Don't hesitate to use it. If you're just doing daily small vlogs, easy, I highly suggest shooting in 1080 at 60 frames per second. You can do like some slow motion with that. And most importantly, at 1080, uh, while your focus when you're moving around is really great and the files are so much lighter and so much easier to process. Stabilization wise, well, you know, Panasonic had a problem when they released the camera. The firmware 1.1 fixed completely the problem of like panning, having like jittering and the, and the panning when you're using stabilization. Now, for this camera, use your E-Stab, turn it on E-Stab and turn on the inland stabilization on also within your menu settings. This helps tremendously. If you remember in the review video, I showed you a few examples of how it works and how well it handles. So check out that video if you want to see more in-depth review like sh uh, shooting example. Otherwise, this is what it looks like when I'm walking around the cities and just shooting basically the vlog. And something very important that I didn't mention in the autofocus, when you're filming video, don't use the AFS mode because simply why I will tell you it's gonna be hunting terribly every like 10 seconds. It's awful, don't use it. What happens is that you focus one, you think it's gonna be continu uh, continuously focused on that one until you repress, but not at all. It's gonna be re refocusing in maybe 10 seconds. So don't use AFS, use AFC or manual mode if you want to stick to the same um, focus. And you can always tap the screen in manual mode to, to focus, so it's perfect. All right guys, so let's recap what we just discussed. I'm shooting 95% of the time in AFC mode, 1080, 60 frames per second, manual video mode with aperture priority. And that's all you need to jumpstart your usage of the Panasonic G85 slash D80 for Europeans. And guys, remember this channel is all about traveling, photography and videography. I'm basically traveling around the world making videos and photography for you guys. And when I'm not traveling, I'm actually sharing the knowledge I have on those topics. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, that you leave a big thumbs up for the video if you like it, and leave me a comment if you want to say anything. And as I always say, yeah, remember guys, make the most of your time on this planet. You never know when it ends. And P.S. guys, tomorrow I have a live Q&A going on on Facebook and YouTube, so make sure you tune in for that. You'll learn about the next trip that is actually starting in just two days. So stay tuned and see you soon. Bye-bye.